sure your microphone is muted so that it does not disrupt the meeting. Thank you very much. And thank you once again to everyone. We are going to an important aspect of our meeting. And it's a first word, first word of the day. Our first word of the day speaker has, a, has an MBA in risk and finance from Business School, Netherlands. He has an LLB from Gimpa. He's, he has a BSc Actuarial Science from the University of Cape Coast. He's also an expert in enterprise risk management strategy and business optimization. His passion include academia, consultancy, social influence, and leadership. And he lectures at the Institute of Compliance and Cyber Analysts, where he teaches enterprise risk management, ethics and governance, and also cyber ethics. And so I'm sure now you're guessing that we, are, we have a very big man in our midst. And he's here to talk to us on a message titled, Be the Difference be the difference and so ladies and gentlemen let's all welcome mr samuel ochre over to you mr samuel ochre hi good evening hello good evening good evening good evening, good evening. Um, good evening. Good evening. i would can, can the host enable me to share my my slides please All right, so um, can we please confirm if you can see my slides? Yeah, you, you started sharing, yeah, so you can. Okay, move. all right, great. So, um, as I said, my name is um, Samuel Yao Sumpa Ochre, and um, I'm actually speaking on something that I consider pretty um, significant. What is that? Um, if, 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 if I said that this ship was parked somewhere in, let's say, Jamestown, and it's taking people to the Caribbean or to US for free, how many of us listening today would, would join this ship to go to the Caribbean or to go to the US for free, um, considering our current status? Um, if we can just unmute and, and he, how many of us um, can, can give me a response as to whether or not they will join the ship um, on a free ride, you actually guarantee the space in the US. How many of us, many of us will join the ship? Do we have anybody here? Someone, I'm scared of Corona. I will not go. Okay, so barring coronavirus, so, <laughs> so, so barring coronavirus, but you have, a, you have an option to join the ship, travel and live in the Caribbean, to live in the US. Um, yeah, you're guaranteed to stay there. How many of us will? Okay, so, so because, because of the online, um, we may not have, but everywhere I've done this, test, we get a significant number of views who say that they will take the trip and they will repatriate from Ghana or Africa. They would have almost nothing to do with Africa. They will travel and have a good life because the good life is at the other side of the sea. Um, and then I go on and ask that, um, why? Why do people, why would people give up um, um, life here for a life out there? And then almost everybody would unanimously say that there is a certain sense of relevant and meaning they are likely to find outside because the structures here um, are built such that it's almost impossible to see career project progression um, to see wealth and power 
um, to get real influence and trust in our circles. So on a purely technical level, and even in the structuring of our society, it's almost impossible to see real growth and meaning um, and relevance in the context. So people actually end up saying that they will travel because then US is the bustling like land of opportunities. It, it was always a claim or China or somewhere like that. And then I go on and ask, okay, so if the quest is for meaning and relevance, will your answer be any different? If I tell you that that ship bore a name that was called St. Juan Batista, which is the same ship that landed on the coast of the Caribbean and the US in 1619, for which we celebrated the 400th anniversary last year with a year of return at the beginning of the slavery, how many of us will still want to embark on that trip 400 years after to a land that is unknown um, to hustle for the same purposes for which 400 years ago, our generations before us were shipped that land. Now, anytime I get to that, well, the answers start wavering, but people are still sure that at, are still at this point, they will still, um, if slavery was still open, they may still volunteer to go and slave in a, in, in a foreign land than be in their own land because they still see opportunities far bustling out there than here. So for the purposes of that, that conversation, we're told that our narrative is that the Portuguese came in 1417, um, they started taking people around 1619. Um, we signed, signed a bond in 1844 to hand over our, 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 our way of life to them. Um, between 1844 and 1845, they had a Berlin conference Germany to partition Africa. Um, some locals fought in 1901 and 1902. Um, people were taken to the World War in 14, 1914 to 1918, where we had the first Spanish, um, uh, the Spanish flu around 1918 to about 1923, and then World War II from 39 to 45. 57, we were battling with independence. The bigger point I want to make from here is that 1963, everybody wanted to in Africa because there was such great hope in 1963 and the early 70s. But we're here 400 years after, and it looks like that hope for which we started building is almost lost, and the youth wants to go back. When the statistics clearly shows that about 12 million Africans were seized and sent between the years 1500 and 1875, um, out of which about 1.2 million people were from the Gold Coast, who were sent into slavery. Now, the question we're asking from this is that, um, is it really difficult to make a difference or be the different in such a context? Many people will still go and slave, or many people have given up on the continent and in Africa per se. Is it a question of a puzzle or is it a mystery? How do we become that difference we so yearn for? For which, um, if the question is asked, how many of us will want to travel to a strange land, um, we will get very few people volunteering that trip. Now, for, for the sake of that, I, I, I want to tell a, a personal story by from the point. So uh, I went to JSS in a small town in uh, in the Bravo, then Bravo region called Giant um, and I was in a school which was a local authority junior secondary. And just as school, before we got to JSS3, leaders were about to be chosen. So it was the natural quest for relevance and meaning. Um, the same battle that we seek for in our daily lives. You know, that quest was for leadership, that quest was for relevance. It was the selection of leaders for the new term. Now, long story short, um, a lot of the head boy all went down and I got selected for something very strange, a position that was rather given to me. A position that was usually given to people of lower, of lower classes, which is a bellboy. Now, the bellboy broke me at the age of about 12, 11. But the question is, that set a certain agenda. So from, from the tales of a bellboy, somebody who was almost insignificant in a small village somewhere in the middle belt of Ghana, the question is, 
how does it grow such that in in a number of few years um the story and the narrative is very different from what it was some years back so from that i want to share a few a few um lessons as 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 we wrap up now i think four questions are important for anybody who understands the concept of Africa and wants to make a difference in it. The very first question I think must be asked is what are the narratives we believe? What have we been told we are? Who have we, what have we been told is our narrative and what have we believed? Um, that question is important because it shifts our perspective of ourselves, uh, what people throw at us, and that becomes a reality with culture. And so in order to find progress the first question i think we should all ask in the quest to make a difference is we should ask what are the narratives about us we believe the second one is why have we failed why are those narratives true why does it matter that those are narr narratives the third question is how do we rise for every person that scope of influence matters in a certain field so ask yourself hard about how do we rise but the last question for me is a bit more important, which is, who are you? Um, the question of answering who you are uh, makes us result in that pursuit that we will be the difference in a world where almost everything does not make sense. And perhaps we will not be like the Romans um, who destroyed a nation in order to be relevant, for which left out the same, Salatudinam Fosiat Persiam Appellant Est, which is, creating desolation and calling it peace. Such that in the midst of all the chaos and all the bustling for relevance, we are not caught in some, uh, some, some facade. So the question of who you are matters. Now in concluding, we need to understand that the real core is a learning revolution from a place of a narrative of whoever or whatever is said about us to a place of who we believe we are. And so the journey is from what is being said about us now through learning of how and why, that's the only way I believe that we can create a new um, narrative of us. But before I end, let me tell yet another story. We're told that the Santa Kingdom was built and it was built on a simple ideology ideo 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 of a story a king told its, its people, which is a story of a broom. The fact that if you take one and you break it, it breaks. But if you put it together and you try to break it, it's almost impossible to break it. Whatever the narrative you find about who you are, it is important we all understand that that quest for relevance does not matter or does not mean much until we all do it together. So the narrative of an African culture where we pride Ubuntu and community is not misplaced. It's actually a place to find relevance and to be the difference together. And so I, I I bring it to an end by um, sharing a book um, written, which bears the title, Be the Difference, which is a manifesto of an African child to be the difference. A, a story that really says that we really believe a single person can make a difference on earth and that we all never should underestimate the fact that a few good people is what it takes to build a nation. Um, so the agenda basically is that in, in a few years time, if a youth is asked, would you rather go abroad or would you make a difference here? I pray that the answer would be, we will be the difference right here in Ghana. Uh, so Mr. Toastmaster, um, fellow Toastmasters, I'll hand over. But this book is actually for sale. Um, it's going for 100 CDs. You can hit me backstage and it will, a copy will be delivered to you. So thank you very much for the opportunity, um, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you so much. Mr. Yao Sumpa, that was an amazing speech. I'm, I'm taking away the fact that it is possible to be the difference and we can do it together. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful um, first word for the day. We'll